How you doing? Well, are you glad to be here? Man, that was quite a... I enjoyed that. Great photography. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marshall, um, you know, I've been hearing Planet X in the news lately here that uh, yep. NASA has confirmed Planet X and also there's a second solar wind that has been detected. Yep. Now, I, I was wondering if uh, if you can go into a little bit of detail, you know, about some of these latest Planet X developments. Well, there was uh, a situation where the people who were monitoring uh, this site that presents the magnetosphere of the planet and found for two hours that the magnetosphere had collapsed. And when they came out and talked about this, they said, well, it was a software glitch, and that's the reason why it failed. That was the official story. They, they said they would come out with more. Of course, they never do. Mm -hmm. uh, there were sites that were saying, well, we're seeing other monitoring sites with other kinds of information that are showing a corroboration for a momentary collapse. Uh, there's a YouTuber by the name of Dutch Sense who caught the government in an absolute patent filthy lie. They were talking about a massive uh, methane release off the West Coast, carbon and methane release, and they said, well, it was just a satellite error or a software glitch or something. They, And what happened was the very same kind of phenomena is being monitored by the Europeans. And what they showed, in fact, was what the NASA site had shown and what Dutch since had caught them just red-handed in lies and cover-up. All right, and can really, you stop right there for one second and t refresh our memory as to what exactly they found? Well, there was a massive release of uh, methane, carbon, as I believe it was methane, off of the west coast of the United States. It was huge. And... What do they what attribute that to, uh, uh, do you feel? Well, there are a lot of people that feel that there's this is an ongoing problem, that right now, you know, we have that uh, natural gas field that went bonkers down in the Los Angeles area. Right. It's been releasing a lot of methane, but that this is part of a larger trend down in there, they just said it was uh, an equipment failure. There's always equipment failures like the U. It reminds me of that great scene from the movie Casablanca after Rick shoots the German Nazi <laughs> colonel, you know, <laughs> and the French policeman says, round up all the usual suspects. The colonel is dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> always takes me back to that. <laughs> and uh, gives me a good chuckle. And it's always, you know, the usual suspects. Right. But there are a lot of releases. Right now, one of the things that we're tracking, there's a tremendous amount of uh, old carbon stored up in the earth, thousands of years old, tens of thousands of years old, up in Alberta, where that huge fire is not only just leveling a, an area the size of a small state, but we're having massive methane or carbon releases there. We're having in Russia uh, large uh, methane releases, so we not only are we're dumping it up in the atmosphere on our own between you know fossil fuels and cow farts. Uh, I'm not joking, cow farts really that puts a lot of methane up there, and uh, we're just uh, we're finding Mother Nature is jumping in. And so there's this whole process of carbon and methane releasing these greenhouse gases. Uh, and at the same time that the, uh, the planet's ability, our biosphere's ability to manage this is being severely uh, hurt. You know, we have acidification of the oceans that is hitting the base of the food chain. 
the Amazon is being devastated so that they can ranch, you know, do ranching for cattle and grow palm oil so that we can go get cheap burgers at McDonald's. Um, so at one hand, we're really polluting, which is tipping off releases of greenhouse gases naturally, and then we're exacerbating the problem by the parts of the biosphere that could scrub this out are being severely damaged by uh, natural man-made activities. But all of this is still uh, the principal cause, and this is what I call the inconvenient omission. <laughs> okay. And, uh, the inconvenient uh -huh. omission is that it's all still principally solar. And we came to that conclusion actually back in 1999. Really? Yeah, but it, yeah, but at that time we were still raving. Well, like 6, you know, they're choking right? the planet and creating a desertification of planet Earth. I wouldn't call that all solar. I agree with you. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, uh, the Inuit who live up in the Arctic Circle have been telling us for a long time, many, many years, almost as many years as I can remember being in this, and I've been in it since 99, that the sun is not setting and rising in the same place, and the stars are not in the same place in the sky. They've actually had members of their tribe get lost because they can't navigate anymore and die. Uh, it's also causing a great deal of problem in terms of, you know, the ice pack up there and their ability to hunt. So this has really impacted them, and they have been telling us for quite some time this is the case. And uh, lo and behold, what finally happens, you know? Yeah, we not only have the wandering magnetic north pole, all right, that's... I mean, do you think that there's it, been a pole change on the planet? Yeah, well, no, there th that has actually been stated. The pole, the physical pole, all right. We have a physical pole and a magnetic pole. The magnetic pole is that's what your compass is following, and that has been definitely changing in a very extreme way. Just you know, because at airports they're having to paint new numbers on the runway because runway numbers are based on magnetic north. The physical north is based on the axis of the planet on which we spin, and that has turned as well. So, yes, uh, we've had both a physical shift and a magnetic shift, plus events are building in the South Atlantic towards a polarity flip where the North Pole becomes the South Pole and vice versa. We have very profound things that are happening. When you mention a pole, right sh now. pole shift, uh, can I stop you there for a moment? Sure. Um, do scientists agree that a pole shift has been going on in the past, that pole shifts have taken place? They agree that these things have happened in the past. I mean, that's, you know, usually what will happen is they'll it's it's what I call the Star Wars logic. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, you know. In other words, not on our watch. Don't worry about it. And so that's how these things are typically explained. Uh, however, what I think is uh, much more important is the fact that they're saying now they are confirming, for, you know, whatever's in the past is in the past, but they're converting now. Our physical pole has shifted. All right. Our and physical our and our magnetic, pole. like you're talking about, yes. both. Both, both. There's shifts in both. We just released on our site yowusa.com, and what you want to do is follow our signs articles. We just put up uh, Planet X signs number eight, and we do a tremendous amount of research on these things because what we're really all about is. It's, it's really hard to do something constructive with one-trick ponies and one-offs, all right? What we look for are trends, things that are we're seeing happening over uh, a significant period of time 
and in different areas and being reported in other media outlets, you know, and credible media outlets, you know, we're not talking about folks that talk to the Zetas. We're talking about people that are running local operations and they're reporting the news locally. Conversely, what we're also seeing is that there's a new kind of suppression happening. We've seen this suppression for a long time with the United States government, and they obfuscate data all the time. They, they, they just want to keep us in la-la land. You know, this is... Uh, this is I, I par for the course on media. everything. Even the huh? earth, that's just par for the course on everything. Even, for example, yeah. the earthquakes, you know, the seismic uh, numbers have been reduced so not to as frighten the, the public. Are you aware of that? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. This has been a pet peeve of mine. You know how the USGS has never met a quake they couldn't downgrade? Right. You know, Every one of them, and I knew what they, was, what they were doing quite some time. I knew how it was going to play out because a 5.1 or a 5.2 or 5.0, something like that, would all of a sudden be a four-point something. Right. Mm -hmm. And the low fives were becoming high fours. Always this pattern, low fives, high fours. Uh, you know, a low six becomes a high five. You know, they always push it down a few decimal points, People let it go, but then now they're saying, and this is the, boy, this is just a huge lie, and they're saying, well, major earthquakes are decreasing. Well, of course they're decreasing because they cook the books. That's right. Okay? You know, what we do is we look at earthquakes, and I get this, and I get the letters from people, and they go, "You're blah 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 blah." blah. They give me all the lectures of 5.0 and above, and I go back and I say, "Recalibrate for 4.0 and above, and get back to me." They exactly. Never yeah. Okay. So what and year was so, that changed? Do you remember? You know, I. Think it was that back in the started, '90s, I think. Uh, Might have been the '80s. Well, they they changed that, but. Well, when they started cooking the books, you know, of course they did change the. You got a lot of know, nerve talking the out there in the scale hallway. Was changed, and the, you're right. That was changed some time back, where they started statistically cooking the books. And for quite some while, where they actually officially changed things at one point. So, you know, we're yeah. on a course to denial of smoke and mirrors. It's been a long, long course of denial and uh, taking us down the wrong path, making us think it's the right path. And I think Americans especially have just had it, and a lot of Europeans as well, and people from all over the world who have been uprooted and dislodged by this new world order that's been marching through. And uh, I, think, well, yeah. I, I think Donald Trump is going to actually, you know, help us out of this catastrophe that we're in. You know, it's an interesting thing. People have been reporting Torah codes, or some people know it as the Bible codes, that right. Trump, there will, you know, Trump will be a candidate and that there will be an assassination attempt on his life. Well, that'll just make it more interesting. I don't think it'll be successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Marshall? You know, it doesn't say whether the success, it doesn't say if it'll be successful or not, but I just had Two different sources, two different Torah code researchers have come back with the same thing. Oh, well, there's such a thing as called divine, you know, intervention and divine protection that I have personally experienced in my own life, and I feel mm -hmm. a kinship with Donald Trump and what he stands for is all I can say, and I think there's divine protection surrounding him as well. All right. Sure don't <laughs> want to see him get assassinated. No, we no. all want to see him march no, on. Now, Marshall... Uh, you know, getting back to this release of, uh, you know, these greenhouse gases, I, I think it was right. back in February when we had this massive release of carbon monoxide. And mm -hmm. um, over the past few months here, I've been tracking it. There's this mm -hmm. um, website that features the World Globe, and they show you different hotspots. Uh, on this globe where, where you see a massive release of carbon monoxide. So evidently right. they got some satellite up there that can detect these gas releases 
and then they updated Correct. on this world globe. And it seems like the hot spots, uh, one is the L.A. area. Another one is around um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, that area. And another hot mm-hmm. spot is on the East Coast near New York. And then mm-hmm. um, around the world here, a hot spot, uh, another one is right around uh, uh, Beijing, it seems like, Beijing, mm-hmm. China. And, uh, you know, where we're seeing this massive release of carbon monoxide. Right. Which and could definitely is- indicate that there is a... Uh, there's plate movement at, at you know going on. Well, that actually is what is of keen interest right now. Is that uh, particularly with regard to the East Coast, and that they're saying well, and this is just part of the natural process, all right, where you have chunks of the plates that are going down into the magma, but. The question is, is has that natural process changed? And, uh, of course, they have the assurances. This is a long, prodigious process. And, you know, but we're not seeing these long, you know, this natural variability argument. It's not working anymore. We know the magnetosphere is diminishing. And interestingly enough, where it is, most heavily impacted is over South America. Yeah. And, you know, this They have a tremendous amount of earthquakes system. going on in a lot of the Pacific Islands and down in Australia. They do. And, you know, what really upsets me is what we started seeing is that news sources we've been going to to get information have become part of the cover-up. A, a good example is uh, one that's called the Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC. And they had a page that was about uh, minimizing the harm and risks of nuclear energy for years. I know I've used it for years. I've referred a lot of people to it over the years because they had a map that was uh, updated on a continuing basis. They showed all of the nuclear reactors in the United States their names, at uh, whether they were, you know, operating uh, hotter than what they originally designed for, what their prevailing winds were, what the danger zones were. Now, yeah, the key word is were and was because now, obviously, it's gone. It's gone, and what they did was, you know, I mean, you can see that NRDC, you know, they drank the Kool-Aid. Somebody got to them, and they have completely abandoned their mission of integrity. They put up this, you know, come give us money page, and they replaced real information with come give us money and a very nice picture of a nuclear plant. They're right next door to the cure for cancer page. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, so we're seeing this. But what's interesting is we're starting to see mainstream media in countries outside of the U.S. are starting to become part of this general trend. What we're also finding, because we do, uh, when we do our signs update article, we rely a lot on archival data from uh, reliable sites to go and look at previous patterns so we can see if something new is happening. And what we're finding is archive data is starting to disappear everywhere. Uh, yes. And the purpose of I've that I've noticed that, that on the Internet, too, a rapid just dis- dis- – uh, they're just wiping out the Internet as fast as they can. Yes. it's the, They are sponging it clean. And so that people who are now coming into awareness – I mean, it's look, Folks like you and me, all right, it's not going to We've change. been on the planet no a while, but no. these newcomers, right. the 20-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, they're searching for the truth. And if it's nowhere to be found, what do you do then? That's right. You know, and it's the old, well, if you can't find it, it's not happening logic. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're throwing at them. So just go back to the mall and go shopping. Right. And this is, this is a very insane 
this is insidious. This is just pure evil. What it is I'll is it's the elimination of the printed word, and so right. then you can just wipe clean the Internet of anything you don't want anybody to know about. It's like living in the dark That's ages, right. really. That is the dark ages, and the reason why they're doing it, all right, now I'm talking as a Planet X researcher, is the reason why they're doing this is it's really, really simple. The if you want to know, when we talk about the elites who controls the world, you know, just all you got to do is start, go look at the printing presses, and then which bankers own the printing presses that print the money, and then find out who they take their orders from. There's the people who run the world. Forget elected politicians. And what they're really setting up is what I call a die-in-play strategy. Now, the vast majority of humankind lives along a coastline. And if those people say, you know, maybe we need to relocate to a different place, more of them will survive. And that's not what the elites want. The elites want, when we have the Planet X flyby, we will have a full pole shift. There's going to be a terrible tribulation, and they want the maximum amount of death possible because they don't see us as human beings. They see us like mullet, all right? Matter of fact, they call us useless eaters, and they live off of us. And so, you know, go to look at the Georgia Guidestones. You can find it on Wikipedia. It's a Ten Commandments for the 21st Century. So, Who do you think put those Georgia Guidestones up? A lot of people think it was. You know, uh, what's his name from Fox? Um, you know, because he's in there in Atlanta. Well, I mean, the CNN. The, thing that the CNN. The, who was it? What's his name? Fonda's I mean, ex, ex-husband. Uh, oh, the... Uh, Jane Fonda's ex-husband. <laughs> Ted. Ted. Ted Turner. Ted yeah, Turner. Well, Isn't he with Fox? No. CNN. He oh, CNN. CNN. Okay. You can see how much I'm no. into the mainstream news because I find no, it I so re- incredibly you know, repetitive I'm... and ridiculous yeah, sometimes. Well, and that phone number is a link to all that you've heard today as well. So, Dr. Houdini, what, we're ready to take uh, this in the direction of sustainability right now. Is, is that a good direction okay. for you to go? Can, can, I, can I make an observation first? Sure. You know, when you were talking about Ted Turner and the Georgia Guidestones, which says keep the population under half a billion, doesn't say how we get there. Right. But interestingly enough, uh, that uh, the the Georgia Guidestones went up in March of 1980, and it was a few months later that CNN went live. There you go. And you know. That's an interesting coincidence. So, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of thinking. people there locally feel like Ted Turner was the one. Mm. It would, you know, it was definitely whoever did it would be engaged with a secret society because that uh, the Georgia Guidestones uh, has very precise celestial alignments, and that is a hallmark of uh, secret societies. You know, next it, when the next show we do together, I'd like to get into the Georgia Guidestones in detail with you for our listening yeah. audience. That would be really a great show to archive. Yeah, it would. Yeah, so let's do that next time. Um, all right, so we are letting our listeners and audience know that this is, uh, we're moving, this is our last show on KFNX for the season. We're moving to Blog Talk Radio until the fall. So uh, when we come back into season here, probably November 1st. So uh, those of you who are used to hearing us on KFNX, 1100 AM, we love being here, and we'll be back again in the fall. So you can find us in the interim on VortexNetworkNews.com. So uh, we have archive shows there. So, Marshall, you know, we're at the point here where now people are opening up to the truth. So once they know that we're as vulnerable as we are right now with our grid system and everything, what, let's talk about some sustainability. Dr. Houdini has some questions for you. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I thought we get into sustainability here, and uh, I know you touched on it in your bio. Um, what, what can you tell us about, uh, you know, surviving uh, the, these well, catastrophes? Well, that actually is where my interest is right now, mm -hmm. is survival. And, um, you know, you, if you know bad news is coming, you know, why, why keep running around like Chicken Little? Start doing something about it. And, uh, you know, next uh, week, uh, May 22nd in Dublin, California, uh, we're doing a seminar. And uh, this will be a, uh, if you're looking at the Planet X Survival West Coast Exodus Relocation Seminar. And actually, it's going to be filmed by a national network. Now, where is this again? Uh, this will be in Dublin, California. That's the Bay Area. That's the east side of the Bay Area. And it'll be Sunday, May 22nd from 2 to 5 p.m. And uh, we have free tickets available for those who need, need uh, special help. And uh, the focus of this right now is on working with folks who do not have the money for bullets, beans, and bunkers. Now, for over the years, I've worked with a lot of people who are wealthy and They've got their luxury condominiums underground, trust me. And, uh, you know, you go ask them about it, they're going to deny everything, which is if you're an intelligent prepper, that's what you do. The uh, Our point is how do we help the people who are in awareness, who are seeing what's coming, and to have a sense of hope that they can survive. And so what I've developed is what I call survival networking. It has nothing to do with MLM or any of that. All right, survival now, networking. now, Marshall, you know, you say who see what's coming like it's a fact. Uh, you know, uh, are you saying that it is a written in stone fact that there is going to be a huge disruption in our society? That's our point of view, yes. And that's what I say in my book, Being in it for the Species. And the things that I've talked about for years that would happen are happening now. We have things going on around the globe that are very disturbing things. And, you know, and things that people just kind of blow off and don't understand the significance. Like, for example, a beluga whale. All right, these are the ones that have got the unicorn look on them uh, with the horn shows up on a beach, washes up dead on a beach in Belgium. What is an animal that always lives up in the Arctic Circle doing in Belgium? How come we have uh, white owls, all right, that are Arctic Circle and they're being found down in southern latitudes in England, all right? Could it be because the physical shift of the planet is actually going that way? Mm -hmm. And the... Numerous things. We are looking at what's not being reported, but people can't find it. We have to go to local sources to do this mm -hmm. for our science article. But from our viewpoint, what we've published, what we've said is that the tribulation is already in its initial stages. We are seeing uh, moderate to light catastrophic events happening with an immense frequency. We've got approximately 40 volcanoes erupting simultaneously right now, and there's two huge differences here. When I first started doing this in 99, there would be about 25 volcanic eruptions a year, and that was scattered throughout the year. That wasn't all at one time. We're talking now anywhere from about 38 to 40 on any one given day, and what's really bothersome is that you have this uh, this new pattern where volcanoes are erupting several times, you know, sometimes like one recently was, uh, I think it was Pocopetl, uh, 10 times in just a matter of a couple of hours, all right? What about Yellowstone so, that they always talk about, old yellow? I've been following Yellowstone for years, and I think that, to be blunt, and there are other researchers that agree with my assessment, and they've come to it the, the, on their, their own, is that 
what's really happening is Yellowstone is being used as a distraction right now. During mm -hmm. its last major eruption, it blew its cap. So when it blows the next time, and it will during the pole shift, it's not going to be this catastrophic winter, nuclear winter scenario. You're going to have eruptions more on par with like a Mount St. Helens and walking lava flows that you would see in Hawaii. The supervolcano that is scary is Long Valley. And you guys in Phoenix, you're going to get buried under the ash of this monster. Now, all you got to do to find it is just draw a line due north of Los Angeles, another one due east from San Francisco, short of the border with Nevada. You're going to find Long Valley. This supervolcano has a single chamber. It is not redistributing magma like Yellowstone is. Yellowstone is spreading it out. This one is not spreading it out. It's blowing up like a balloon. It's got a huge limestone cap. And when that thing goes, you you guys sitting there. In, well, actually, now, where where, is this? actually, I would just want to say something here. Where, where? West, the southwest. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. get the Baja Peninsula type weather coming right through mm -hmm. here. That's why it's so hot. Okay. Well, I grew up in Phoenix. Well, right? okay, so, it's, it's, it hasn't you changed. Know, I maybe. understand where the weather comes from. Right. But you know, when it goes, you're still going to have. Uh, this ash fall from Long Valley is going to spread out as far as West Texas. Now, now Marshall, right. yeah, if, if, yeah, if I can step in here. You know, uh, several years ago, uh, I became friends with a psychic. And the mm -hmm. psychic wrote me a letter. This was back in the late 1980s. But uh, she wrote this letter in 88, and it was given to me back in 1993. Mm -hmm. And it said one of the last things in this letter is that she mentioned, uh, in terms of uh, natural disasters, she mentioned uh, that the seven sisters uh, are going to blow. It, mm -hmm. it, it's going to erupt. Now, the Seven Sisters, I believe, are located up there in the Washington area. This yeah. is a volcano chain. Yes. And she said, look for this sign, okay, that the Seven Sisters, it's definitely going to blow. And she mentioned nothing about Yellowstone. Yellowstone is like this red herring that they keep throwing at us. But it's yeah, not Yellowstone. They, it's the Seven you know, Sisters on the north Northwest Coast. That's right. And Cascadia. Yes. Uh, you know, you're ha Cascadia is the largest tsunami generator on the globe. When that thing goes, it's going to be absolutely horrendous. Yes. Right now, I just finished. Uh, and, and so you're looking, you have the San Andrea. And this thing, according to the L.A. Times, is locked and loaded to move, I think, something like 26 feet. And I can tell you that I recently spoke with uh, an architectural engineer who has an office there in Los Angeles. He's got a cash cow business. He's got, he's just inundated with projects because what's not been reported is Los Angeles County has advised commercial building owners that if they don't get up to code, they go to prison hard Whoa. time. Okay? They are really sweating it down there. So the They're liability is uh, over the land. top. Huh? The liability is over the top. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's things are really starting to build up and to get serious. They're waiting for some major event. You know, San Andrea goes. I, then you're looking at the whole West Coast is going to up, unzip. And so with Yellowstone, all right, yes. I mean, that's I, I agree with you guys. It's a red herring. There are other things that are absolutely much worse to be worried about. I, yes. would, I sure wouldn't want to be on uh, the new Madrid, okay? That thing is going to go. The San Andrea and the New Madrid, they're going to go, and when those guys go. All right, go, now tell people who, who do not know where the New Madrid uh, 
is, you know, because very, you know, Americans haven't had a very good education. Well, the New Madrid is in the center of the country, essentially, and the if you're along the Mississippi, and I guess that basically it's a good way to just think of the New Madrid as along the Mississippi area, but it's over there in the, uh, you know, if you're looking up uh, from Louisiana, mm-hmm. you know, you look at different maps that people have produced and Louisiana is part of a major Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's it's gone. Uh, if you're in St. Louis, wow. I mean, St. Louis is a nightmare when that goes off because they really don't have. They've got all these unreinforced masonry brick buildings, and they're like really like floating in a riverbed almost. Yeah, yeah. So if you're in the New Madrid area, uh, flooding, you know, flooding. Uh, I mean, golly gee, you don't want to be there. Well, you know, there's uh, yeah. there's 15 nuclear reactors there too, and they're all dated, huh. and they want to build a bunch more. Yeah, you know, this is they've really sentenced us between nuclear and fracking. They've sentenced us to die. That's what they want. Uh, I mean, this is planetary. This is how to end it for 85% of us, like they want to do. Oh, it's more than that. It's complete destruction. Well, they'll be down in Paraguay, over at the Bushes Resort. Yeah. Yeah, you go out and find where the elites are parking their tuchus, and you're not going to – they don't eat GMO, and they sure don't live near where there's fracking or nuclear. Right. And because they understand how they set us up. You know, the thing about Fukushima that was the big lie was they said the plant blew because it lost power. No, that was a huge lie. It was it lost all four of its water pumps. If you can't pump water, you can't keep things cool. And that was not the only plant affected. Four plants lost water. Four of the Fukushima plants lost water pumps, which are all at sea level. One other plant lost three of its four. If it had lost the fourth, we'd have had a two-for-one sale on Fukushima. All right. I think so, that's already happened. I think it's in the bargain basement now. It's, I think it's 90% off. I think, you know, well, the corium are in the ground. That's it. It's China syndrome on three reactors. I, I yeah. had a friend here who was living here in Phoenix who was involved in the UFO movement, who was there at Fukushima when it happened. And mm. uh, this guy, he'd sit next to me. He was glowing green. I said, don't sit next to me anymore. <laughs> well, he passed uh, away last year. He went to, he passed away, yeah. He died oh, from uh, the oh, yeah. radiation poisoning. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, the you know, it's going to be worse. That uh, that plan had GE Mark I reactors, which were inherently defective in the design, that when they discovered that they couldn't, they were supposed to contain things, they can't contain, uh, the lids blow off on them, which is we actually saw on, I think it was uh, number three at Fukushima, the lid blew up, looked like a champagne cork coming straight up. And they did... The Nuclear Regulatory Agency did this nonsense retrofit to strengthen the lid, the containment lid. It was nonsense. It was like cosmetic fix. I mean, what they needed to do was to take and deactivate these reactors because they won't contain. Exactly. Um, We're dealing with a tragedy about to happen, you know. The writing's on the wall that if we don't make some major changes very soon, We'll all be sitting here, you know, with uh, residue that will be clean up like uh, nobody could ever deal with, really. Just a horrible mess. Yeah. I don't See, I'm yeah. of the uh, saying, you know, I probably would want to be the first one out of here ra- rather than the last one. Because, you know, I feel this way. If the, if the world's going to fall apart, they can just come to the mall and find me, right? <laughs> you wanna, you know, you're just gonna. Get yeah, I'll just, and, I'll just wait you know, until they run out of goodies at Macy's, and then I'm out of here. 
Max the card and die happy. Well, I feel this way. You know, it's like if I have to kill somebody for a soybean or something, I just don't think I'll be bothered. Well, a lot of folks feel that way. You know, my thing is there's actually, and again, you know, that's the dark cloud that we all see coming and been talking about. Well, now you say we all see coming. Just speak for yourself, please. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot fine. a lot of us are in complete denial like me. We're not going to okay. we, the last thing we want to do. I mean, I, seriously speaking is overdo it on paranoia, but the Mormons have a have it down, I think right, don't you? Well, they're, they're balanced on things like they say, okay, you store up food, you store up necessities, you store up these things for a little community of people. And then if anything happens that you need them, you've got them. And if you don't need them, great. They're there for people who are poor and need them at the time. And that's what they've been doing for many decades. Yeah, and, you know, it's nothing new for the country. We come from pioneering stock, and it used to be that way. Right. I remember relatives back east in the summertime, they'd have gardens, and then they would can everything. Absolutely. And you'd go down to the basement, and the walls were lined with Kerr's canning jars. And I got news for you, what they canned was a lot better than you'd buy in the store. Incredible uh, stuff. Nobody, incredible stuff, and nobody does it anymore, but... You know, I, what I see is an opportunity here where humanity is, we are a slave species. We're sure treated like slaves. And during this time, you know, the last flyby of the Planet X system, because when you calibrate for lunar years, not Gregorian years, so it's 3,600 lunar years, and when you do that, It times up perfectly with the plagues of Exodus, which was a global event. And think back to that. What happened? Moses had the ability to, as they say, in chaos is opportunity. Well, he exploited that. He knew Egypt would be weakened, and he was able to use that chaos to extract the Jewish people out of bondage and get them out of there, which is celebrated every year at Passover. Well, during this next flyby of the Planet X system, we have enough population on the globe, enough survivors, so to speak, we could up it to a whole new game. How about instead of freeing a people, we free a species? All That's right, big- Marshall, we're going to have to end on that positive note because we are going to be freeing up the planet. I feel very strongly that this that we're going into the Renaissance age here on planet Earth. And it's going to be a whole revival of that, which is very important to all of us for survival. That of those things are keeping the planet clean and pristine and as, as we possibly can. And then from there, going into our super health and nutrient diet. I've read articles recently that said anyone who's alive now can live for another thousand years. Really, theoretically, there's nothing in your body over seven years old. So we're going into this golden age, and it may be kicking and screaming. It may be pathetic sometimes or look pathetic, but I have the feeling that we are going to be triumphant. And I want to thank you, Marshall, for being with us again today. That's Marshall Masters. Just Google him. He's all over the Internet. You'll find all the information on him. He's very well known. And we are VortexNetworkNews.com.